Good evening, everyone. My name is Pete Berube. I'm the chairperson of the Millis Finance Committee. Tonight is the 16th of March, and I'll call the meeting to order and ask everybody to introduce themselves, starting with my left. Sarah Reyes. Peter Underhill. John Lohr. Jody Garcon. Kathy McInnes. John Stedman. Joyce Boyardi. Super. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just start off by saying thank you very much for um, everybody uh, giving us the extra 30 minutes uh, with some, we had some conflicts and some personal schedules, and um, I know that'll keep us here a little later than normal, but I uh, appreciate everybody um, doing that for us. Um, we're just going to get right into it, and we'll start with uh, Ms. Patty Cahill. And I'm Bert Lan, I'm the chairman of the board. Thanks, Bert. Council on Aging Director. Um, I see that um, the first five. Speak into the mic. <laughs> I'm not loud enough. <laughs> it just doesn't pick it up. Okay. <laughs> the first five pages, I think, what you have are updates. So if you just put them aside, we can just jump right into the budget narrative. Can you um, clarify? We so. If there were, if there was material provided after the budget books were done, no, we, was, we don't have them. This is what Karen sent to everybody in the um, today. Okay. Yesterday. Okay. Sent to I'm all of you. So the you first know. page, you yeah. see the budget so request, the bubble level service, or that's in our email. What? And typically, I wish I could, yeah, yeah, I I could show it bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they can tell us as we go along what is the changes. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, if right, we don't well, catch something, okay, well, yeah. okay, we'll see. Yeah, but I didn't print it out. Well, to tell I you what the senior center does, our primary goal is to improve the quality of life for our older residents by providing information referral to local, state, and federal departments. Um, the council also provides all transportation to Millis residents, to the elderly and disabled. We also have community outreach that assists all Millis residents with information, referrals, benefit counseling, support groups, uh, help in finding resources, um, including health benefits counseling, free legal counseling, advocacy for housing, uh, financial, and many other concerns. Any questions as to what we do? Uh, we also work with a number of um, different partners such as Hesco Elder Services, Department of Trans, uh, Transitional Assistance, Shine, USDA, the Mass Bar Association, Norfolk County Sheriff's Office, and Bay Path Elder Services. Um, we have a list of accomplishments. The first time I did the list of accomplishments, I compared 2020 to 2021, and it was suggested by the select board that I look at uh, 2019 compared to 2021 because of the um, COVID. And I don't know if you have the updated form. It looks like we just have the 2020 versus 2021. That. Okay. So I guess we'll look at the 20. 20 and the 2021, which of course there was all um, great increases because during COVID, um, we really didn't do our normal day-to-day -day things. Um, the only increases we saw during COVID were of course phone calls, log, um, and our outreach services. Um, You, you saw a huge decrease in our paratransit reimbursement, it, which is the reimbursement we get for providing transportation to the residents from Department of Transportation. Um, it went from fiscal year 20, 8,752, to fiscal year 21, 2,329. Do you know, um, Patty, if I can interrupt you? Sure. Does the, those funds go back into um, a revolving fund for the Council on Aging or back into the general fund? Our paratransit goes into the general fund. Thank you. And how much was that, Mr. Chair? It's right there. For fiscal year 21. 
2000. A 329, thanks. 329. Um, would you like me to just jump right into the budget? Mm. Sure. Um, it's a level the, funded budget. Um, let's see what we do here. Um, the main, the only really difference is um, outreach. There's an increase in our clerical um, because she started at a higher step than our last clerical. And also for the outreach worker, there was a difference um, because our last outreach had a master. So our new outreach worker started at a lower step. Any questions on the numbers? No, no? we will okay. we will speak up if we have questions. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Silence is cool. Our equipment de detail, we have three vehicles. We have two handicapped vans, and we have one vehicle. Uh, they're, they're all in very good condition. They're all pretty new. The last two we got were from an earmark from the state. And we're not looking to upgrade our vehicle, which is the um, Chevy Cruze, until 2025. I'd just like to add that thanks to some hard work by Patty and uh, Representative Linsky, we now have handicap plates on the vehicles, which makes it a lot easier. I'm, I'm one of the drivers myself, and it really makes it a lot easier when we uh, take folks for their medical visits. So it's great. jumped us through hoops for the yeah, most. Yeah, but you did. Patty but did a lot of work on the Representative Linsky. Also. Yeah, he made great. a little phone call. And yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it really helps. We don't have him anymore. Great. I know. Oh. <laughs> um, our above level service request. Which one do you have? I had to. Got the 23.5 hours, 27,678. Right. Um, what we're looking for is to, I had requested a, another full-time position, um, but with um, listening to the select board, it was very highly uh, unlikely that that would happen. Um, with the um, full-time worker and the additional benefits, they just weren't seeing that. So they asked me to come back with something else, which I came back with um, adding nine hours to my outreach worker, who is already a benefited worker. She would go from 20 hours to 29 at a cost of 11,000 11, and change. So um, please clarify for us. So the above level service request is not as it's listed on the Form 6, it's something different. It's the updated okay. Form 6, which I guess okay. you didn't get. No, but we'll, we'll look for it and yeah. make sure that it gets posted for meeting materials for this meeting. So for committee members that don't have it in front of them right now, um, look for the meeting materials for 16 March, and there'll be links to those documents. They're probably there now, but I know some of us don't necessarily check um, our town email you know, right before coming. So, Mr. Chair, if I can make a request on that. Please do and speak. No, no, right into the microwave. Uh, to the, mi to the microwave. <laughs> right into the microwave, please. It's been a long day. Um, a lot of the time, the uh, budget items and the material that we'll be reviewing for the meeting is sent out. Can we make sure that if there's going to be different material that is in our books that's identified so we know to print it out? So we're working on that um, not I'm successfully. Not um, and the idea that uh, what I've asked for is that if there's any changes to any documents that are in our budget book, that the presenting department bring those changes with them. Because right now, without admin support and without me depleting my ink and paper and time at work, um, there's really no way to get them, um, at least consistently. So what I've proposed is that um, for any department that's coming to um, present to us, if there's a change from the documents being presented versus what's in our budget books, they bring nine copies with them. Okay. That's the best way I can, that I think we can ask it until there's an alternative. So not, not your fault necessarily, Patty, um, 
but we'll get to it. And so for now, please just reference um, the website um, for the amended documents, okay? And they'll be posted. And they very well, they should be, they, <laughs> they should be posted because we're talking about them. It's part of the meeting. It's part of the record. So they will be posted. Okay. Mr. Chair, can um, a few of us have it up on the screen. Can you just outline what <coughs> your current budget request above level service is going to be? It's going to be nine additional hours for our current outreach worker for a total of $11,067.93. And Mr. Chair, is that, is that it? Is that what you're looking for? That's what yes. we're okay. looking for. Thank you. Joyce. That's above the 23.5? No, it is not. No. Oh, that's in no. the... Oh. 20, yeah, the 23.5 is... Okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> good. That's okay, this so is just not uh, nine yeah. hours for the current yeah. hour. We have to go back and forth with the select board. So, so nine additional hours. Yes, for an existing position. For an existing, so the existing position has how many hours? She's currently 20. Okay, so, so she'll we're go to 29. 29. Uh, Mr. Stedman. That was the question I was going to ask. <laughs> does this trigger any additional benefits? No, it does not. Okay. And that was... 30, is 30 the magic number? I'm sorry? 30 is the magic number yes. for benefits? <laughs> 20. 20. 20 is Okay, so she's already over. Okay. All right. She's sorry. sorry. Thank you. Benefited. Yeah. And Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Uh, so I'm assuming you have the two numbers there because uh, at some point in the year, her she gets, she'll, a, she gets a bump. Okay. Um, it's in your, so the question I'm going to ask, the answer is there, but I would like for you to expound on it, um, and that is the justification. In other words, you're asking for nine additional hours. What is that going to get you that you can't do now? You knew That's I was going to ask. That's why I also submitted, which you'll be able to see later, a, a copy of our, um, our staffing. What by, this will, by day. By day. Um, what you'll see is it will give us, typically we have three workers on per day. Um, only one day a week we have our four workers, which is absolutely mandatory with the council on aging. Um, so what this will get us, it will get us four staff, staff people four days, four days, four days, three days a week instead of the one day a week. And Patty, why do you need four? Again, I'm not questioning it. I just want to understand so that I can support this when it, when it comes the time is, to vote on it. What, what is the I requirement really for four? I think to see it clearly when you look at the schedule. Yep. So um, we have it. workers, I myself work 7.30 to four. I have an outreach worker. She works nine to four. On those days we have three workers, we have a receptionist from nine to one. So we only have two employees there from one o'clock to four o'clock. It's impossible. Trying to answer phones, trying to help people that just come in. Uh, typically we are very busy in the morning and we try to keep busy in the morning so we'll have some time to do our work in the afternoon. But with just two of us there, it's just impossible. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, I do. No, I want to hear it. You know, I can see the yeah. the chart that you're referring to, but I need to hear it. Um, so and thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a, a good example is the dispatch worker, because people are constantly calling in to try and make an arrangement for a ride. Mm -hmm. And if the the dispatch worker isn't there at any given time, that means Patty has to answer the phone or right. Debbie Sands or outreach right. worker. And then. And there's only two of us. And then to take that, I mean, I you know, again, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but that means that there's a a van that we have as a resource and an asset to serve the community that's not being used right. um, because we're not booking, right. we're not using yeah, it. So, and there's, and then there's residents that are not, their needs are not getting met. So, okay. Any, um, any questions on the above level service request? Mr. Chair, I'm just noticing and want confirmation, Ms. Patty, that um, this outreach worker will work two days that she normally doesn't work now Correct. and that no one's working. Yes, and well, that's when except I have the, to step in exactly, and be the outreach okay. worker for two days, which on top of my duties, it's, right. it's a challenge. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, 
Ms. Kew, as I understand it, you presented your budget to the select board. Um, the select board um, gave you a little pushback on the original request. You, you resubmitted it. Did you represent to them? Have they seen this? Um, I turned it into Mike and I asked him if I needed to go back and I okay. guess he determined not. Okay, well, we're gonna talk, the select board is coming to see us um, for a number of reasons uh, next week, so we'll try to make a point to see, and we'll, we'll uh, that'll be a record as, in terms of how they feel about it too. Not that we have to agree on it, but I am curious, okay. so, okay. Um, also, what I also did was I submitted a um, comparable graph of towns similar to Millis in their staffing. And um, Millis is the lowest at 2.2375, compared to other towns, Littleton 4.4875, Holliston 3.35. These are full-time staffing hours. We're severely understaffed, and um, I just thought it would be helpful to be able to look at that information and just see it in black and white. Ms. Boyd. Um, in comparison to those towns, what's the population comparison for elderly? Um, it's I don't, very don't similar to Millis. What I used is the last uh, survey, uh, salary survey, and I used the same towns. They have just about the same population. Of seniors? Of p population, 8,000, 9,000 residents. And, and, uh, and, uh, sorry. I, I took a look at it too, and, and the percentage of seniors compared to the total population is very similar. Okay, so that's a, yeah, because yeah. I mean you want to be able to compare seniors, <laughs> Apple, to, right, yeah, right. apples to apples, because if they've got a much younger population, then you yeah. know they're all, they're maybe overweight. Joyce, <laughs> oh, well, okay. but you don't have to repeat yourself. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, We're on the for clock those here. Land who did not hear me, I, was, I asked if the population of seniors or the population of each towns that she compared to were the same as Millis, and they were, for those who may have heard her answer, but not my question. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Patty, Bert? No, that was great. Appreciate your time, as always, and your support. Um, can I, can I speak? Yes, you may, certainly. You can just find your way up to the microphone. Come on up here. Come on up. Don't go <laughs> Come on in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good evening. Um, my name's Ellen Rosenfeld, 12 Evergreen Terrace. Uh, Welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I just want to give my two cents for what it's worth. Take it, leave it. That's what I tell people. Um, I've been meeting with Patty the last few weeks, a little bit earlier, um, going down there, asking what's going on, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if any of you have ever spent any time down there. If not, you should. The number one thing I learned was calling it the Miller Senior Center seems to be a misnomer because they do so much more for every citizen in this town. I, seriously, my head exploded for my short time down there. These are just the things I jotted down. I forgot half of them. Besides this taking care of all the seniors and the programs and the transportation, and uh, almost a third of our population qualifies as seniors now. Yours truly included, thank you. Um, besides that, they offer help for every citizen in Millis for fuel assistance food stamps, housing, housing, anywhere in the state, um, financial assistance. They help with the Millis Fund, all the veterans and the disabled. Everything they need at, in a hardship situation, which Patty has confirmed is not getting any better. She puts people in touch with state and local resources. But it's more than that. She has to do it. She does it. She punches and fills out the forms. If these people call a state agency, they end up calling her to fill out the forms. I said, well, why don't they fill out the forms? Well, they're too busy. They can't fill out the forms. The state people, why don't they fill out <laughs> yeah. the forms? Yeah. No. But, oh, you know, we yeah. have Patty. Yeah. It's 
I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. People walk in, people call, people are confused. They don't know how to navigate. I don't know how to navigate. They, they're lost and they're panicked and they're anxious. And this resource down here in the basement with the new yellow paint is all they have. I mean, I am telling you, it is extraordinary. So that's my first just observation. My second is, what she is spending her time doing, this is our director, this is the director, this is the number one, she gets the big bucks. She's doing the programming and, and doing the newsletter, the newsletter. Do you get the newsletter? I get the newsletter, I love the newsletter. She shouldn't be doing the newsletter, okay? She runs the activities, she brings the donuts and the boop and the bingo, I mean, really? This is the director. She should be looking for grants, have the time for grants. There are plenty of grants out there. She doesn't have time. Overseeing the staff. She didn't have time to oversee the staff. The good news is she doesn't have very many staff, so, you know, there's that. She should be looking at the transportation situation. That's all they have in Millis. We have no taxi in Millis. We have nothing else, right? I mean, this is it. Housing, housing for people. She says there's a Metro West grant out there that offers between 10 and 20 grants. She's never had the time to fill out and follow up. She doesn't, she's not able to attend these director's meetings where she could maybe learn what other communities are doing. She doesn't have time. I mean, I don't know if I'm the only one that knows this, but shame on us. I'm telling you, it, the fact that she went from asking for a full time to these nine hours upsets me. I'm hopeful that this won't be the end of giving her what she needs down there. I'm hopeful. But just, I was at a Board of Selectmen's meeting several weeks ago. We, I just, this is my so almost first introduction to this and I watched her, same presentation to the board and one of the select people said, well Patty, you're, you're managing down there. You're doing it, you're doing it. <laughs> okay. So I get up and I say, yeah, it's no different than business, right? You pile it on and pile it on and pile it on and the good workers, the good workers, the conscientious workers, the ones who care, they do it right up until they don't. And then they walk out the door and now you gotta hire three people because nobody's gonna take that position because nobody's gonna take a position that does everything that she now does, right? Her job description is not what she's doing not what she signed on for. So I feel a little passionate here, as you probably hear in my voice, but I don't want to lose her. And I don't think the town wants to lose her. And honestly, if you have a chance, Kathy, I know you're down there. I've seen you down there. But if you have a chance to go down there and visit and see what happens and what she accomplishes, I'm telling you, your head will explode too. That's all I got to say. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mr. Gazinski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I didn't want to interrupt Patty during your presentation. So, but, um, and I'd like to thank Alan for her comments because I think they are doing outstanding work down there. Um, I think Patty and her crew do yeoman's work down there in, in serving the seniors in this community. I will say, um, as far as her, the proposals of the Council on Aging, the board has not had any formal discussions on these since the original presentation. Okay. Over the next week and a half or so, I do expect the board to take up this issue again, as well as many other items in the budget. So I wouldn't say that her proposal is off the table. I would say they're looking at several different options, and I think the two that she presented here tonight are both on the table for the board. Um, I think, uh, as I said, uh, Ellen made a lot of great points, and it's something that the board will be discussing. So I, I just don't want to leave the finance committee with the impression that they consider this issue closed for this fiscal year. They are considering it. So okay. should the finance committee have any comments or feedback for the council or for the select board, we certainly welcome those. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So my, my, under, my understanding is that they haven't shut down the 23.5 hours? They have not. I simply, as I do with every budget process, because we do have to, to the best of our ability, match 
the budget requests with the, with the funding available. I do meet with all the department heads to look at different options to try to meet goals within each department. And I did meet with Patty about that as well, just as I meet with the police chief, the fire chief, DPW superintendent, all the department heads. We meet, we have those discussions. So when the board does meet again to discuss, uh, the select board meets to discuss the budget for next year, this will certainly be one of the topics that they'll be discussing. So yeah. I, w I would say that um, for, for our knowledge and for how we're going to proceed, when we get our overall budget presentation from Ms. Johnston, which I believe is um, on the calendar for next week, we'll have a, a better idea as to what is there for funding. And we don't have to vote on one no. proposal or another. Um, when the budget's put together, when the we get to you know make comments and make inputs and vote on a, any particular line in the budget and provide that feedback um, and recommendation either direct via communication with the select board or in our discussions and vote on the warrant articles. So we're not tied to one presentation or another. No, I just wanted to be sure that it as. Up until Mike came up to the mic, I was under the impression it was only nine hours. She had to cut it back to nine hours. It's nice to see that the 23.5 hours are still on the table, that it hasn't been shut, because I think that our seniors do deserve more than they're given. They seem to get the short end of the stick a lot of times. The budget just doesn't ever seem to be available for the Council on Aging, but seems to be available for other things. And I think that, in my humble opinion, I mean, maybe because I am now a senior, <laughs> but um, I don't use the senior center very often, but I do see the need. And I think that because we've got such a large population of seniors in this town, that have supported this town for years and years and years, it's time to do something for them. Thank you. Right, okay. and again, I, I thank the Finance Committee f for that. I would say that certainly um, we will have more information coming forward. Uh, I'll have a continuing conversation with the director about you know the needs down there and the different options are still on the table, certainly. Like I said, when I meet with all the department heads, I ask them to look at all the possible options to improve their department operations. And they all have different cost components. So it's all part of the larger puzzle we're trying to put together. And you know, certainly this is an important part of that. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. OK. And Patty does a great job down there, like I said. So. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, Thanks, Bert. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, um, we're going to need to catch up a little bit. Uh, Ms. Harden, please, with the, for the town clerk's budget. Good evening. Lisa Harden, um, Mills Town Clerk, also a resident, 56 Walnut Street. I have uh, three budgets. The town clerk, the reg board of registrars, and elections. So I'm going to, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to sort of go through them um, in Lisa, a I'm different order. Okay. I'm just going to interrupt you real quick. Do you know if there's any changes what you're presenting versus what's in our budget book? No, there isn't. Okay, as thank far you. As I know. Sorry to interrupt you. That was good. I might have the question. <laughs> Unless somebody <laughs> did something without telling me. <laughs> uh, let's start with the Board of Registrars. There's a total increase of about $850 for the Board of Registrars. The Board of Registrars is uh, myself and three appointed people who are responsible for voter registration, the annual town census and publishing the street list. Now the people other than myself um, do the certifying of those documents. It's the staff, myself and my staff who do the uh, office type work of looking at the signatures and seeing if they're actually registered voters, that kind of thing. And collect, you know, sending out the census, collecting it 
So it's mostly the town clerk staff, but there is a board. So it's a small budget because most of, um, well, all my budgets, the main expense is people as opposed to expenses. So it's a level service budget. There's $740 increase because of increases in prices. And um, I added in $100 to the clerical salary, which is um, my office staff doing some of the work. I'm trying to separate it out when they do the payroll so I can tell, well, how much of this is board registrar work, how much of this is election work, how much of this is town clerk work. But it's hard sometimes because they intermingle so much. And the same with supplies, because I only have one supply closet. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Uh, are you required to separate things out that way? Like, is it kind of a, we have to have a board of registrars, so you have to have a separate kind of budget for registrars? As far as I know, it's a state law. OK. And yeah. I have to have a board of registrars. <laughs> And I have to have an elections. And they have uh, to kept be sep and the kept separately. Yeah. All right. And I think it's helpful to the town to know, particularly with the elections budget, what's. Because that fluctuates quite a also bit. Also includes town meeting, yeah. what um, expenses are related to that. Because it's mainly the, uh, the, the election workers. That's the, a, lot, a huge percentage of that budget. OK, thank you. Um, so if you're not, uh, if I can, I'll move on from that. Please. It's only like $800. All right. Now, the elections budget is, did, um, it's based on how many events there are in the fiscal year. So this fiscal year, there's two more elections than the previous fiscal year. So there's a total of three elections. There'll be... Uh, September primary this fall and the November election, which is when we do the statewide, uh, like governor, attorney general kinds of things, and the town budget. So those are the three budgets, I mean three elections, sorry, and the regular two town meetings. Plus there's um, a 12-day early voting period. Now the early voting is a little still up in the air in relation to the primary, I don't know if there will be one um, required or not. It's set by the state, not by me. There's no money in here for an early voting period. That's when people can actually come in to the town hall and we have room 130 set up uh, all day, every day, and they can vote. Now, in addition to that, or if there isn't that, there's still absentee voting when people can, can come in all day, every day, <laughs> and vote absentee. But they just do it at the counter in the town clerk's office rather than uh, me having a separate room that requires more staff and the voting machine set up and things like that. Um, Lisa, could you expound, when you say all day, every day, um, surely it doesn't mean all day, every day, but what is the requirement, if any, that you expand your hours for, say, early voting, or I mean, an absentee would be a absentee likely through the mail. Is um, either through the mail, or they can come into the office and do it right there. Yep. How about early voting? What's the early requirement? Early voting. And what's the additional the, staffing? The definition of that um, is, I there are uh, it. It's like a mini election. I have. Um, Three people with a voting booth for each precinct. The people check in at their own precinct. They get their ballot. Because Millis, part of the problem is especially, well, this year, all the time actually. Millis is split in the state rep seat. We do still have David Linsky until the end of the year. Yeah. So if you want to use them, go, ahead, go right ahead. You got you know, six or eight months left. <laughs> but both of our state reps are actually going to change because Sean Dooley has decided to run for state senate against our state senator, Becca Rausch. So his, he, he represents Precinct 1 and towns that way. And David Linsky was Precinct 2 and 3 and towns to the north. 
And it's my understanding Sean Dooley's precinct uh, district has not changed, but David Linsky's district has changed, and he lost Millis, which is why he, he's still going to be a rep, but now he's going to have Natick and I think Wayland. But again, what's the what's Sorry, the requirement? You, no problem. Because we need we we need they need different ballots. Understand. And we have to be sure that the workers give the people coming to vote the correct ballot. Who who sets the early voting hours? The state. And what are they? Well, for the as far as I know, at this time things are always changing, but based on last time and what I've seen for this time, we have to be open all the hours that the town clerk's office is open, plus um, uh, some weekend or evening hours. And to make it easier for people, because we close, the town hall closes Fridays, during early voting we're open till um, 4.30. So we, we have the same hours basically all every day. It's easier for people to remember. You know, you don't want somebody knocking on the door at 1 o'clock on Friday. Mm -hmm. That's the only time they can come to vote. Um, and Monday nights were open, and then we try to be open like four hours on Saturday um, and for a different four hours or like 9 to 1 and 11 to 3 or something, Saturday and Sunday to give people it's Sunday. People have all different work schedules. You know, it's you, you really can't, can't expect people to just be available when, when the halls open. When was the last year that you had three elections and two town meetings? And the reason I'm asking you that question is because, I mean, I get it. There's an additional personnel workload yep. for three elections and two town meetings. Well, but if I go back to 2018, I don't see where the budget has doubled well, or doubled or tripled. It, so I'm just trying to figure that out. Yep. It would be um, two years ago, so 2021, and that had the um, presidential election in it and the September state primary and then a town election. So why and is the budget that, this year double? Because that figure isn't correct. It doesn't include any of the money that we got from um, all those COVID funds and grants that the state gave us. Um, that's money that came, I can't really explain the accounting, because, uh, but we spent way more than that. We were buying things right and left. And we were staffing, I mean, I didn't budget for any of that because I submitted my budget before COVID hit. So, you know, we had to have um, way more staff, people coming in to clean, uh, social distancing. Uh, do you anticipate having to do those things this year? Yes. So your personnel dollars, <laughs> again, your personnel, I just want to understand the, yep. the, nope. you know, the accounting as it's presented, and the personnel dollars has gone up almost threefold between FY21 and FY23 for the total personnel services. Mm -hmm. There's got to be an explanation for that. And if, and if the explanation is that we had COVID infusion of resources or revenue for FY21 and it was for COVID, I'm not, and if your explanation is that you're anticipating having to do the same things this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. I don't know that we are. I don't know that the, anybody else in the town is. I mean, fall town, uh, excuse me, spring town, annual town meeting in the spring, we're not going to be presumably socially distanced. We're not going to be all masked up. Oh, we're not yes. going to be out in well, the parking lot. Well, maybe not masked. We will be socially distanced. We'll it says, <laughs> we who? Can't, we says can't, who? Says who? Says me. We can't okay. crowd people in. I, I don't want to have, I don't want to be responsible for any kind of, uh, whatever they call those things where super spreader. Super spreader. <laughs> okay. And I've got election workers who stay there 18 hours. I, I can't do that to people. Okay. Okay. Any but more? I agree that it looks like a huge increase. Um, well, it is. The, but, but if part of the problem was that <coughs> a lot of the um, 
decisions on where to pay, pay things out of happened like June 30th of that year. And it wasn't really something I had my hands on. It wasn't something that I was deciding because I didn't, it was through the accounting department who had the, who were uh, administering the COVID funds. Why are we had a small, hold, hold, we hold had on. a small $5,000 grant we did. Please hold on. Yeah. Um, that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> One second. <laughs> Carol Johnston, I'm the finance director. Um, I think the part that uh, Lisa is missing is that she receives grant funding for um, the elections. And so that grant funding is in a separate fund and that pays for a lot of the salaries. Now, I'm not sure whether or not she's going to be getting grant funding this year. Well, I, I'll respond to that. Okay, minute. but anyway, that would that would be the discrepancy between I mean, I did the analysis, and the most, even with grant funding, um, the average was maybe 25000 with the grant funding. There was one year that was a little bit more with grant funding, but that ended up being because of COVID. So over the last maybe five years, I would say it's probably 25000 and of that, some of it's paid by grants. So you would only, what you see is actual... What you see is actual, what the general fund paid for elections, and so any other amounts were paid by um, grants that she received either from the state. But we most find, of them are from the them, state. We find out about that <clears throat> later. Like right. next spring, we might find out that they're going to give us some money to help pay for this fall. But we have no information now, so I have to put in, well, I think it's a responsible thing to put in the money that I. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to pay the people this fall without knowing if, it, if I'll get a grant from the state or not. The auditor department, the state auditor, comes up with Okay. Ms. Barati. It might, it just my, thank you. <laughs> just my observation that perhaps when you're presenting this in the future, you put down the grant money you have received for these years so that we can see that truly the cost was, but what we actually, what the town paid versus grant money. Because from here, it's looking like you're asking for $30,000 more. And from what I'm understanding is some of that $30,000 more may end up being grant money. You just don't know for sure. So for a presentation point, it might be better for us to understand that if somewhere in your paperwork you say this was grant money th and that's why, rather than trying to justify it. And I would justify anticipate it. that she will receive grant money again this year because she has in all the previous years. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to address what I think oh. Carol is talking about. Mm -hmm. I do get... Um, What's considered a funded mandate is when the state went from um, that you didn't have to open your elections till 10 a.m. to that you had to open them at 7 a.m. So they send me grant money for the state, any state election, not a town election, but that will cover three hours. And I have that in my, um, it, it's a total of like nine or Nine hundred, twelve hundred dollars, and it's in my form two. Um, whew, near the bottom, where it says less nine hundred per state election paid by the state, and I took out eighteen hundred dollars out of what I was going to need. I don't have the the COVID grants were just something that came up. Nobody knew about them. In um, during 2020, people realized that the elections were going to be a mess if they didn't, if, if the state didn't give people money to okay. properly staff. So that is not, the, those COVID things are not anything that I had ever had before. And I don't know, it doesn't sound to me like we're going to get them again. So we're, we're being asked to step up our game, make you know, changes to the amount of staffing and 
we don't have the, that initial um, funding source that we had in 2020. Would you say that the additional personnel dollars um, requested, so there, there's a, an increase, again, like threefold or two, about twice the amount, almost three times the amount between the 21 election and the 23 request? Would you say that's because of additional hours or because of potential COVID precautions? How would you say that, that those additional money, money is, or costs are split? Um, I don't know how, how to split them apart because they're, they're so why intertwined. Is it, why is it three, two to three times more than it was in 21? Is it because well, additional, it isn't too, it, additional it hours? I'll, why don't I, um, I'll go to the accounting department and see if I can get the information on how much extra we spent, because I know a lot of it was on personnel. Okay. And, and the other thing to realize is that the hourly wage has gone up, um, because a while back it turned out that we had to pay election workers minimum wage, and the minimum wage has been going up 75 cents every year. Okay. So this current year is fourteen twenty-five. Next January is fifteen dollars, and you know, last year in twenty in twenty-one it would have been um, thirteen fifty, and in the twenty twenty big elections it would have been twelve fifty. Okay. So that would also have a an effect on the amount. I would appreciate if you did um, try to break that cost out because I don't understand where it's coming from, um, and I guess. Uh, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. Um, I understand that you are responsible for elections, and I, it's a great responsibility, and I appreciate that you are doing, I think what I heard you say is you're doing the best thing for the town and for the employees. My, I, I have deliberately not tiptoed my water, my toes in the water of debating COVID anything with anybody for the last two years. Um, I'm in a position where I, I feel like I kind of have to at least make a comment on it here. I'm not, I don't intend to debate it, but I'm respecting your position that your job is you're responsible for elections. The point that I'm about to raise is that we as a town ought to be consistent with how we do that. So if our school kids are in school, not masked, not separated, with teachers, and we're planning on an election or a town meeting that is potentially masked, potentially socially um, distanced, there's a difference there. And that's what I think deserves some discussion. Um, but again, you're responsible and you have the authority to conduct town elections. So I think you should do that in the best way you know how. And I'll just leave it at that. I, I'll just make one comment that I'm, I'm not up to speed on exactly what the school children are doing, but they are children. And it's my understanding that they are, if they get COVID, most of the time they don't get it very severely. And the election, the people who come to vote are older than that. You have to be at least 18. And a lot of them are over 30, over 40. So I'm also dealing with a much older population than the schools. Thank you. Mr. Stedman. Uh, 2019 would have been comparable to 2023 as there would have been uh, the three elections and no presidential election and no COVID. Uh, and there the, uh, the total personnel costs were $11,000. So that gets to Pete's four times. Uh, how are you able to do that in 2019 for $11,000? I had a lot fewer people working um, they were closer together. We didn't have any early voting, so there, there were many fewer hours that we were open. Um, the other thing is the absentee balloting. Um, way, uh, it's cheaper to run an election if everyone comes to vote on election day. Mm -hmm. I'm running a party, I say, for, you know, 5,000 people. They all come in and go out the same day. It's but if I have to spread it out, spread that party out over two weeks, it's more expensive. And 
the the pay rate was lower. That's another thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, you keep going. Yeah, I don't know. If you I mean, have I can more give you more information requests. if you need. If you want to, like, 2019, 2021. You know, I can. I I have these forms, form two, that I'm giving you uh, for those years. Right. And it's. Let's look you at. Can see. Let's look at form two. So the top is the clerical, and that's the people in my office who do a lot. They do a lot of the um, work with the absentee ballots and setting up the elections. And the election worker time, I also have um, some people who come in and help with that. because we have a very small window of time between when we get the ballots and when they have to get sent out. It doesn't show the, no. doesn't show the election. It's, so it's, in it's the, on the one that uh, says it's elections. It's the second one down. It's the elections. Yeah, keep not going. Elections no, form, not two. Town two. Clerk, form two. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, I keep going. It's almost to the end. It's like second from the back on the PDF. Yeah, I see, I don't get it. But. No, it's, on, it's not that one. It's this one. It's the forty-seven thousand. Keep going to elections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just starts at the go top to two the positions. Treasurer there. collector tab, and then go back two pages. Yeah, that's the forty-seven. There we right. It agrees. <laughs> so that you can see the eighteen hundred dollars that I subtract from the personnel cost because that's the um, that's the grant I know I'll get. That that's the one I do get each time there's state elections. Okay. And going back 20 years, I've been getting that. That's going from 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock to... 7 to 10. 7 to 10, that's that For, money. Yeah, this, the, um, the auditor's office sends out a form every other year, and I project what it's going to be next year, whatever, for those hours. <coughs> okay, please keep going. Do you have any other questions about the elections budget? The only, um, oh, I, the increase to the supplies was about 2,000. Um, postage, which the actual cost of stamps has gone up, but that, it's you also don't need to, increasing. Unless somebody has questions, you don't need to go over and that. And the other one is food, and everybody okay. knows cost of food's gone up. Okay. <laughs> So now I think we're on to the clerk's Town budget. Town clerk. All right. So the town clerk budget, um, not going into my over well, above level service request is uh, the salaries go up because of um, contracts, the $6,000. Um, salaries and longevity, uh, one of my staff becomes eligible for a longevity payment. And the book bind, uh, not book binding, expenses um, is going up 5600 the equipment repairs looks like it's the line that's driving the increase. Uh, dues and subscriptions. That's the new pet um, Sorry, dog yeah. licensing, which <laughs> was approved in December by the Sluckman, and they're taking out. I had asked for it. I've asked for it two years. Uh, it's an online dog registration uh, ability for the town. And it's the same that's one that so the town of Medway has, mm -hmm. and we, since we're sharing the animal control, we look, We tried to use the same <coughs> company they use because it made sense for the animal control people, person, to be able to just use one program. And it, it was competitive pricing anyway. So that's the increase there from the 1200 to the 48, I believe that's $3,600. Is that gonna be annual? No, um, oh wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 
this year, it's 3600 that it's coming out of the IT budget. It was approved by Mr. Germain. It paid for the initial, um, the initial sign up fee, which was originally 2000. I got them to come down 600. So it came down to 1400. And then there's a fee to transfer all our records onto <laughs> their uh, program. Okay. And then there's an additional fee of, I think it's $2 or $1.50 for every dog license that actually gets processed. How much revenue do you, or what's the fee charged to a resident registering a animal? $10 for a spayed or neutered dog, 15 if it's not. Is that comparable to other towns? What yes. does Medway charge? Uh, I couldn't tell you just offhand. I think, believe it's the same. Okay. The, the point of doing it is to ensure that dogs get rabies shots. It's not to discourage people from getting a license. And so we try to encourage people to get licenses and that way we know. And the town clerk's office and the animal It's control. not a money raiser, if that's what you're asking. Well. <laughs> I mean, it's it can't no. be it really can't I'm, be. I'm interested can't in the be. net. Be. Um, <laughs> it's a public Not health issue. <laughs> so, um, is the town clerk's office and the animal control officer satisfied with the software, the new software? Uh, so far, I don't believe it's online yet. Okay. They Pre keep saying we're their top priority, but <laughs> okay. It's it's we're part way there. We've gotten halfway. Mr. Chair. Mr. Stedman. <clears throat> Uh, question, uh, do the funds raised for, uh, from charging residents for a license go into the general fund? Yes, they do. Thank you. And there's an additional fee to, um, if people, when, once the thing is on, online and actually working, and they use, um, they can pay with their debit card or credit card to Unibank, and there's an additional fee to the uh, dog okay. owner of either 50% of the total fee, which isn't that much, it's only $10, or something like 75 cents. But that's something that they pay. We don't get into that. That's between like Unibank and the person who's using the system. But if they just come in, we still have the tear off sheet at the bottom of the census for people who want to do it by mail. Okay. Lisa, unless you have more, can you go to your form two for the town clerk's office? Yep. About in the middle of <laughs> the other form too. The other form too. Like what other form two? Four red lines on no, there. You mean town clerk form two? You've got form two it's and then form, form two. two. And then form two. Keep going. What about it? This is the board of registrars. There's right another one in here. It's further. It's before registrars. Yeah. yeah. The first form two is for the town clerk. This. This one. Yep. Right. This one starts out. Lisa Harden, 12,000. Is that the mm -hmm. one you're talking about? Yes. yes. Um, my salary is the same. Uh, Kathy and Sue's <laughs> is determined by the um, union contract. Um, I did add some money for overtime. We are being asked to be sure we're open all the time that the town hall, you know, regular business hours. And I have one full-time person who gets five weeks vacation and is occasionally sick. And I have one 20 hour a week person. So I'm trying to cover some of the, I can do some of them, but I'm trying to cover some of the hours with um, the person who's not out. I, Mostly at Subara because she's a part-time person. So I needed additional overtime money because we went over last year. So, can you talk about the thirty thousand dollars stipend? Sure, that's my above level service. Yes. Um, on form six, I have been asking for above level service for since two thousand fifteen. The I think I need to give a little historical background. 
the town of Millis is the only town in, Mill in Massachusetts of a similar um, population that does not have a full-time uh, town clerk. And that occurred because back in the 1970s and 80s when other t towns were going to a full-time town clerk because up until that time, most town clerks, it was one person and maybe a part-time staff and the town clerk was part-time. They had some other job and they did it you know, at night. Um, a lot of the town clerks were going to full-time realizing we have to be here all the time. You know, we, this office should be open all the time. Well, the person who was town clerk at the time was George Ford, who lived in town all his life. He was a uh, history teacher over at Clyde Brown School, fifth grade. And he didn't want to stop teaching. He didn't want the full-time job. So he made his assistant a full-time person. So that's when, the, that's when the staffing in Millis got kind of screwed up. Uh, the department head was part-time and the assistant was full-time. And it's been that way ever since, be, partly because the person who was the assistant was here from the 60s until oh, she retired in Roma Curran. She retired in 2005, seven, something. Maybe it was 2004, 2004, I guess. Um, and nobody was going to, you know, change her hours once she was full time. And then a, they realized they needed additional staffing, so a part time person was hired in the 90s. So the staff levels in that office have been the same for about 30 years, with a very part time town department head and a full time assistant town clerk and a part time assistant clerk, some kind of assistant. So when I became, I started working there in um, 2000 and I was the part-time assistant. And then uh, George Ford decided to retire in the middle of a term and Roma didn't want to do it. She was getting older. And so I said, well, I'll run for the town clerk position. Um, so I did, and I've been town clerk since 2003. No longer working, uh, you know, paid in the office. And so some people say, well, you know, you came into the situation, you knew what it was like. That's true, except I didn't realize that Massachusetts, uh, Millis setup was totally different from everybody else. And it was still working, kind of. It's been since 2000 that, um, you know, we've really gone gangbusters in terms of the internet and computers and all this stuff, which was supposedly going to save us paper and time. And it's just created way more paper and taking way more time, because now everyone wants copies of everything, and they want reports of everything and they think you can just get it by going like that, which you can't. <laughs> so uh, the staff level isn't um, enough. We need more staff time. And my idea is that some of it should be the department head because the department head you know, looking around this town, every other department has a full-time department head. The, the selectmen and the finance committee must think that it's appropriate. I don't see you telling other departments that, oh, they don't, they can have a part-time department head, you know. Lisa, so, has, has, I, I'm gonna interrupt you just, go ahead. just a little bit. Has there I been, a rant. has there been a, either like a desk audit or a manpower study of the town clerk's office? There has been. The town actually spent, because I was harping on this, they spent $6,000 one year on, not too long ago, three years ago maybe, on a study that compared Millis to other towns. 
What they found was we probably have enough hours. It maybe wasn't distributed appropriately, but we probably, we might have enough hours. Unfortunately, there's no way to change the hours or no, nobody seems willing because my two staff are in the union. So I, the only, the only suggestion I can make at a budget meeting in the public eye is uh, more hours for myself because I'm is, not in the union. Is, is that why you, the request is formatted as a stipend versus additional hours? Well, I'm not paid by the hour now. Right. So it would be difficult to say how many more hours it would be. I would, I'm saying, I mean, I put in more hours than an hourly rate that my uh, clerical staff gets. I mean, I'm paid at a lower why, rate why is than the they request, get. <laughs> why is the request for $30,000 in stipend versus additional hours or additional salary rate? I've tried various things over the years. This is just this year's version. I have tried for a full-time salaried position. Um, that didn't go anywhere. So, you know, I've tried different things to see if, uh, you know, if anything will intrigue anyone enough to actually talk to me about it. So I've, I have tried different things. I'm, I'm kind of negotiating against myself, which is not a good thing to do, but I don't have any choice, really. Okay. And I'm not going to just uh, step back and say, well, the town of Mills can just do, do it without additional, you know. Okay. I mean, I feel like the town of Mills needs a department head in the town clerk's office, so I'm going to keep pushing for it okay. one way or the other. Any questions from the rest of the committee? Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Underhill, you may. Lisa, um, yes. on your form three, your, the town clerk position is listed as 0.14 hours of an FTE. By my quick math, that's 5.6 hours a week. That, I don't know where that number came from. I okay. asked Carol, and she said, well, that was the number that was there when she came to work here. She doesn't know where it came from either. Um, I probably do an average, I think, of maybe 10 hours a week. Okay. It varies. Mm -hmm. um, some are, some weeks it might be a little less, and then around um, elections and town meetings it could be 40 or 50 hours, so okay. it really varies. I, I don't know, I honestly can't say where the 1-4 is. I, um, consi I asked about changing it maybe to 0.25, which seemed a little more realistic, but they said, well, you're not, nothing's changed, so just leave it the way it is, because okay. no, I, I can't really say I'm, it, I'm working more hours than I was two years ago. And just a follow-up question, um, with, with the increased stipend or the increased position, how many hours a week would you anticipate to be able to work? Well, I was thinking um, 20 hours a week um, in the office while the other staff are there. But I put in way more hours mm -hmm. than that. I'm here nights and weekends. Um, Lisa, who do you report to? Who's your boss? Um, I'm under the authority of the Secretary of State and the Attorney General. Who's your boss in, in Millis? Um, the townspeople. You are. Thank you. You, you as one of 5,000 people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anybody yeah, else? They seem to think I'm doing a good job because they keep reelecting me. Anybody else? I just want to, um, Mr. Chair, just uh, confirm that the extra hours you stated, if received, will be performed during when your staff is there. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, right now, part of the problem is I can't um, support myself on $12,000 a year. If you guys have suggestions for how I can, that would be great but I have to do other work, and usually that's during the hours that our office is open. So I can, sometimes can stop in there, but I can't usually stay for an extended period of time during regular business hours, okay. except like Monday nights. Lisa, anything else for us? 
Um, yes, if you'll. Um, we just need to move along. Something. We're way behind schedule. Well, I can talk. I will. I can stay until later to talk about. I think you're going to talk about the those warrant articles where they're suggesting changing the town clerk from elected to appointed. We're going to talk about that next week, actually. Oh, next week. All right. Let me let me just make sure I've got it right. I thought it was on the. Maybe so not. we're going to talk about the non-passing articles very briefly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this week, so from last uh, calendar year 21 fall town meeting, we are going to talk about the non-passing articles um, in terms of what goes on to the warrant this year. We'll be talking about that next week, and the select board will also be convening during our meeting so that we can talk about it with, with them as well. So it's on the agenda. It's the on the agenda weeks. next week, but it was one of the non-passing It articles. is, and we'll, so we'll wait. we'll wait for that. Oh, okay. Because I think uh, Ms. Gonsalves is, is also waiting. Okay, <laughs> and I have one other thing I just want to throw out at you, which you do not have to respond to. You just have to sit there. Um, I was at the selectmen's meeting when What's the topic? somebody presented the Council on Aging building. We'll, we won't take that comments on well, that right now. Well, let me just say why. Lisa. The, one of the Lisa, things the Lisa, town clerk does. I don't want to talk about it right now. It's I, not on the you agenda. You don't have to talk about it. And neither do you. So please. No, I do want to talk about it. We're not going to do it now. We're way behind schedule. We're going to stick it, to the agenda. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. It just jogged my memory. What the town clerk is responsible for is re preserving town history when no one else seems to be doing it. And so I just wanted to throw out an idea and I don't want any response that, and this is the Finance Committee, um, we might want to think about buying the Rocklawn Mansion at the corner of Exchange and Curve Street to preserve it for the town. Thank you very much. That's enough. Okay, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, <laughs> and Lisa, possibly put Lisa, the council please, on aging there. <laughs> please help us out. Really? They have a parking lot, they have a, Lisa, please. I don't have a gavel. Kitchen. I don't it's have a gavel. It's handicapped accessible. Thank you. All right, we're going to do the uh, Board of Assessors office and budget. Thank you. It's so painful. Does anybody know where that is in our books? Assessors. Um, okay. And it's just column FY22 town meeting adopted. That's the only change. Is that copies for us? Yes. Oh, the, thank you. You're <laughs> fantastic. Yay, thank right. you. And it's just that one column that may be incorrect in your book. It appears all Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank Carol. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You had an insider. <laughs> I did. She did. I did. All right. I've never been before you before, so I don't know what you want. We, How do you want me so to I'll, give you, you I'll give you some guidance. We'll okay. give you some guidance. I want you to hit the highlights of anything that's changed and anything you feel that's noteworthy. So you can go over it in as much or as little detail as you feel appropriate. And if we have questions, we'll let you know. There really is no change from last year's budget. The additional recertification request is the balance for our recertification. The Department of Revenue recertifies towns every five years. It's a two-year process. It started in fiscal 22. It will end in fiscal 23. The funds I'm asking for is to cover the other half of that recertification. And that's really the um, largest change in the budget. So I'm looking at a jump in meetings. Okay. So there's a meetings that goes from 16 to 4,100. And then there's a data cloud software for 5555, which wasn't there previously. Okay. The meetings would be for 
That would be the cost for our education cost. We have a new clerk in the office, and we have to start at step one for that education cost. The cost of our education is going up. Training. That's att training, okay. attending meetings, courses, et cetera, et cetera. And the data cloud software is a uh, piece of equipment that was approved at special town meeting to purchase. This is the yearly cost for that piece of equipment. You use it in the field, and more of your information is entered into the computer system when we're out in the field versus handwriting it, coming back into the office and doing the data entry. So uh, I don't mean to correct you, but because of public record, I don't think it was a special town meeting. I'm guessing it was probably fall oh, town the meeting. Oh, the fall town meeting. Excuse okay. me. That's I okay. It's just a term of art. And, My town and, is and, called a special town meeting. Okay. Here it's a fall town meeting. I okay. apologize No for problem. <laughs> no problem. And so was that a capital purchase that came with a annual cost, like a subscription? Was that pulled? Yes. And was that known at the time yes okay thank you mr chair mr lore so is that 5555 an annual ongoing number it's going to be an annual ongoing number subject to any increase from the yeah. um, data supply company <laughs> thank you notice she didn't say decreases <laughs> <laughs> no she wouldn't say subject that to no. <laughs> mr chair miss mcginnis Just the, uh, the assessor's office has been asking a long time for this um, type of software, and you have it. What do you think of it going from handwriting and then going back to work? To we don't have it in our possession yet. The wheels of uh, public administration are, are churned slow. very slow. Once it was approved at Fall Town meeting, we have to save our then paper we had to, to go give to her after. <laughs> Everything has to be approved okay. through their attorney, our attorney. Gotcha. All right. And where we're in recertification, we won't actually start using it in the field until after recertification is complete. It is a bad idea to use new equipment prior to recertification. Okay. Thanks. And when will the recertification yeah. process finish if everything goes correctly I'm anticipating mid October to mid November depending how quickly the state approves all of the various forms that need to be approved okay miss Boyardi no no you had your hand up anyway mr. Stedman yes <clears throat> so if you uh, I have a question so if if you're not going to start using this software until October, mm -hmm. after the certification, why do we have a full year's uh, <clears throat> maintenance on it? Because we possess it. Even it though we're not be, using it. It will be in our possession this fiscal year, so we have to pay a full okay. software. <laughs> they got For you. For the upcoming fiscal year, yes, they do. <laughs> okay. Please appeal to them to change their mind on that. <laughs> I, I am working on that. Thank you. <laughs> because they don't have me for training until that point mm -hmm. and that's their schedule yeah that's like getting a an appliance warranty that starts before you actually have the appliance I mean mm -hmm. same idea it's crooked <laughs> okay any more questions None. yes you may as long as it's on topic Lisa Hard, member of the Board of Assessors I just want to say that into the mic please Terry Gonzalez is doing a great yeah, job she <laughs> she's fantastic she knows everything about everything whenever I ask a question <laughs> she's able to answer it. or sometimes the next day but hey she knows where to get the answer mm -hmm. and I think she's like a star <laughs> thank you very much okay thank you that wasn't so so bad or hard I hope thanks um, I don't see the Conservation Commission here Mike Did they uh, I was asked to present oh for them. I'm sorry so I will uh, recuse myself we have a uh, <laughs> we're we are honored for you to present go ahead mr. Kaczynski on the on the agenda we did contact um, Dr. Letterer, who is the chair of the Conservation Commission, and he is quite comfortable having Mr. Stedman do the presentation on behalf of the Conservation Commission. Uh, you know me, I love efficiency, so. <laughs> Thank you. The uh, Conservation Commission 
is responsible for administering and enforcing the State Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, so we have authority for anything within 200 feet of a river, which is the Charles River and Bogostow Brook in particular, and 100 feet of any bordering vegetative wetland. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a board of, uh, of seven volunteers. Uh, <clears throat> We uh, frequently do site visits. In fact, tomorrow night we have four site visits. Uh, 114 Norfolk Street, where somebody wants to remove a tree uh, that <clears throat> is within the protected zone. And three properties on Main Street, Colt Manufacturing. They want the certificate of uh, completion for the solar installation that they recently did. Uh, <clears throat> 1397 Main Street, Black Cow. They want to replace a fence that uh, is adjacent to the wetlands. 1370 uh, Maine, uh, they want to add some driveway and want a determination whether or not that falls within a protected area. Uh, the budget is flat. The staff there is a portion of uh, Camille's salary. Uh, Camille does an amazing job. She just uh, received the uh, state award for the administrative assistant of the year from the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. Well deserved. Any of you who know or talk to Camille, uh, she deserves uh, your congratulations. She also serves on the planning board and the CPC. Uh, so our funding is level. It's uh, the salary and then uh, uh, <clears throat> just some supplies and expenses such as uh, advertising our, uh, our meetings uh, for the public record. Any questions on the, uh, on the budget? Mr. Chair. Mr. Lohr. I notice the salaries has decreased <clears throat> slightly. Yeah, I, I don't know why Camille put that in there. Okay. Uh, it's she's that good. Of course, uh, just uh, want to make sure accuracy. She, she's a union thing. employee. So, you know, that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, what it's, it's a $3 <laughs> decrease. So I, uh, I can't hey, speak to that. This is a tough committee. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah. see it that often. That's my point. <laughs> so we have an above uh, budget request. Uh, that I'd like to uh, speak to. <clears throat> we, uh, in addition to enforcing the law, uh, we, are char we are responsible for managing 18 uh, properties that uh, the town, or in one case, the Conservation Commission owns. Uh, <clears throat> it includes a little over half of the Cassidy Farm, uh, the Braun property on the corner of uh, <clears throat> Orchard and Exchange Street, Pleasant uh, Meadow, Village Street walking paths, and Richardson Pond. Uh, our budget does not have any money in it uh, to maintain those properties. We've been able to get somebody to hay them to keep trees from growing. Uh, but uh, uh, we get lots of complaints that they're in poor condition. Trails are blocked. Uh, there are trees down on uh, Village Street. So you can't walk the high trail. Uh, and <clears throat> what this... Uh, this request, uh, we can't remove falling trees or, or anything. So what this request is, is to hire a summer intern that would work with the DPW. Uh, DPW does not do anything on Conservation Commission properties. So this would be one person that would add to their crew. Uh, they have three summer interns. This would be a fourth, and they would devote about 20% of the time to doing maintenance on uh, conservation properties. It's the first time we've presented this. Mr. Sedman, will the Conservation Commission provide the DPW with a list of priorities for them to uh, supervise or manage the work to be performed? Yes, okay. we will. We'll also provide some, uh, uh, some education to the intern, should we be able to hire one, uh, about the Wetlands Protection Act and why it's important. And will you, was there any inspection of the work when they're done? <clears throat> will the Conservation uh, Commission oversee you the, know, what is? We, we're volunteers and we will do that, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Mr. Underhill. Um, this is fantastic. The question I have is, will this worker allow the Conservation Commission to tap into the equipment of the DPW as yes. needed as well? Yes, you that's my understanding previously. with Mr. McKay, and he's fully on board with this. Great. Thank you. I don't know how actually the funds work back and forth. Mm -hmm. We'd have to work that out with Carol, but sure. I'm sure that can be done. Thank Mr. You. Chair? Ms. Garzon? 
Uh, is there any thought of being able to tap the host community funds for this intern? I, we have not explored that. I'm, I'm not aware of that program for the host community. You're okay. referring to the HCA dollars for yeah. marijuana sales. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how we would do that. Yeah. Well, it's putting a young person to work over the summer. Yeah. But <laughs> there are many things that are a stretch, though. Yeah. As long as it fits, it's not a stretch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as long as it fits, it's not a stretch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's just an idea. Yeah. Um, is that why this is here? Is I think this, this is just a standard form that goes mm. with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chair, how many hours a week is this? <clears throat> this would be working with the, the DPW at the, uh, the same hours they have. I believe it's 40 hours so it's a week. So it's a 40-hour work? Is right. Just, okay. At the same rates that they have, these numbers are the same that uh, uh, Mr. McKay has in his budget for his interns. Any more, Sarah? Ms. Reyes. Um, I just have a question. Are, is there any grants that the commission can tap into for? Uh, the, not that we're aware of for maintenance. Uh, you can get grants a lot of times if you're doing uh, doing improvements, okay. uh, but. Uh, not for maintenance. How many um, volunteers serve on the board, that board? <clears throat> uh, I believe we have uh, seven. seven. Any vacancies? But we're all volunteers. No, no vacancies? Okay. No vacancies currently. Okay. Looking for another board? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering if the conservation has explored um, post-summer staffing. It's all great and good, but it's in the fall when a lot of the final cutting should be. And uh, I'm wondering if, if you know, you realize you're limiting your staffing to just the summer help. Well, there's, <clears throat> there's, other than what volunteers do, there has been no maintenance on these properties in, in years. Uh, so we've, we've really got a deficit. Well, and I understand that, but was there any reason that you didn't ask for an additional uh, hour or two a week post summer uh, to keep up what you, uh, a, lot, a lot of good it does when there everything's meticulous over the summer and then it fails. It Just would, throwing it out there. It would be maybe. wonderful if we had a stronger relationship with DPW. Uh, speaking just personally, but uh, uh, we, we well, they're not allowed. They're not permitted to work on site. So that's why I was just wondering if you would increase any, any hours or anything. But thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I believe the DPW has a great reputation with every board in town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Thank Sedman. Thank you. Ms. Johnston. All yours. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Carol Johnston, Finance Director. Um, I was asked to present the five-year revenue forecast tonight, so that's the, uh, the information that I just passed out to everybody. Um, we can go down through the, um, the FY22. All of these to say per recap of the, what the actual revenues were in those particular years. Um, so the FY23 revenue, the projection, is for the base factor for the local taxes is $25,877,750. Mm -hmm. um, that's a factor of the previous year, fiscal year 22, if you add the first two lines together and the new growth. 
that all rolls up into that $25 million 877 number. Um, the 2.5% increase for fiscal year 23 is expected to be $646,944. And the new growth is projected to be $750,000 for the coming year. Um, the debt exclusion for this year is $3,099,457. And the, that brings a total of the levy limit for us for fiscal year 23 at this point to $30,374,100. Uh, Carol, I'm going to uh, just sure. interject and ask you a question real quick. Sure. Um, the new growth number, um, you know, is half of what it actually was in 22. That's correct. Can you opine as to why? Sure. So I, I, it's, uh, I should have had Terry wait. Um, that's the number that the assessor has given me for the fiscal year 23, that she feels very confident in the number. Um, the other two years that we had the, the big growth, fiscal year 21 and 22, is when the Glen Ellen phase started, phase one and phase two. Phase three, I think they're, they're, may, they're take, just starting to take permits out on, but I don't believe they've started any of the construction on that. So it's slowed down a little bit. And uh, other activity in the town, uh, like Acorn Place, the rest of those have added big numbers in there. Those are will be coming finished and coming off. So that's what the projection is right now um, for 750000 Okay, unless there's any more questions, keep going. Thank you. Okay. So the state aid, uh, as of today, um, the, the town will receive is uh, $6,590,800. <coughs> that can change. The um, state has not finalized their budget yet, so that, that could be in flux. It usually comes in pretty close to what they project at this point in the year. Uh, transfer from special funds is projected to be $589,833. And our free cash available to us right now is $1,190,059. That's what's left over from the certified free cash that we had in the fall of the $2 million. Could you quickly characterize what transfer from special funds is? Sure. Looks like it actually it's noted over there. Right. So transfer from special funds um, is our uh, cemetery and cell tower um, income that we get. Uh, the transfer from the ambulance fund is $412,000 out of that money. And our bond premium release is $127,000, which makes up that full, full number of the 589. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, our local receipts are projected to be $1,743,489 this year. And our enterprise indirect costs at this point uh, again, this number is not finalized because it's it's set based on salaries for departments. So once those are set, um, we'll have the final number. Right now, it's seven hundred and ten thousand seven hundred and thirty-five dollars. Um, and I see that that number went up in FY22 by a fairly good amount, and it went up again. You know, you project it to go up in FY23, and that's because of our reallocation efforts um, last year. FY23, that's just a, it actually is about a 2.5% increase over last year. Okay. But the six, from 614 in 21 to 693 in, in 22, that's because we, the town took steps to allocate uh, resources from, or to, from the general fund into the enterprise, correct? More, more than well, likely. Well, this would be revenue is, side, so yeah, never mind. So this is, so these are the indirect costs. So just like in any organization that you have, when you have um, your administrative staff working for, if say you have a product line, so you, it's a percentage of whatever there, it's kind of like your overhead number. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, my question is to why the large increase from 21 to 22, and I'm just making note that um, the town reallocated some costs from general from DPW to general to enterprise um, and I'm questioning as to if is that the reason for the the increase in well, 22 this, right so this so this particular indirect cost does not have any of the FTEs that actually work in the okay. enterprise systems this is just the town administrator's office okay. the accounting office the treasurer's office and um, 
the benefits, uh, health insurance, retirement. Just prorated from those. Exactly. Okay. All right. Exactly. Um, so that brings the total available, um, total general fund gross revenues to $41,199,066. Out of that um, above figure, we have to remove the um, state aid offsets, which are 433,149. That's for our um, library. The, the two offsets are for the library and for the school choice. And then our debt exclusion is removed as well because that all of that money is a, is already accounted for. It's part of the debt exclusion at the top. Um, then our net enterprise funds revenues are projected to be four four million one hundred fifty nine thousand seventy four dollars, and the CP, CPA funds are projected to be two hundred ninety two thousand six ninety nine. Th this is just a best guess estimate at this point in time. The the figures could change a little bit. But pretty much, this this will be a, about it. So that brings a total of other available funds for appropriation of the uh, four million four hundred fifty one thousand seven seven three, and the total available funds for appropriation for general fund and enterprise funds and CPA, and um, come to forty two million one hundred eighteen thousand two thirty four. Um, I have a That's question great. on local Go receipts. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be quite a bit of fluctuation on local receipts from FY19, you know, going forward, kind of raising up and then kind of falling falling back down by, by quite a bit. Do you know mm -hmm. what the reason for that is? Um, I'd have to go back in and check for uh, 19 and 20 um, to see what caused that variance. But um, the rest of them are pretty much in line. Well, building building permits may have been one okay. because you had influx. But I, I can go back and find out what the particulars were, what the drivers are. For well, you. building permits definitely makes more yeah. sense to me than automobiles. Right. Uh, right. Because that has fluctuates, but not exactly. not that amount. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Actually, Mr. Jampetro told us that uh, he had a record year last year and he anticipated it going down this year by close to half a million dollars mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. or more mm -hmm. and and thus you know i mean that's not all of local receipts but that would be it would make a big difference it would it would right. show up yeah it's right. not not uh inconsequential at all right. yeah so do you think that the local receipt projection out in the out years is is high um, because I, of the because of that particular issue well you're always going to have a certain amount of building not to the degree that you had in prior years because a, a lot of the money is given in the in the years before they actually start all the building so I can I don't anticipate that that's going to be a problem the, the largest sum that you have in your local receipts is your motor vehicle and that's about one million dollars every year one million one million one. It all depends on how many people are buying new vehicles, whether that number is going to go up, new people moving into town, the value of the vehicles. So that's a, it's a pretty constant around a million. It can go, it, it will always go a little bit above a million, but um, I think that it's fair to say that it, it's a pretty safe number that's here. Could you um, kindly just throw us together, pull some data on local receipts, just what you know, maybe a three-year average or three-year table on what it has been, what um, for local receipts for the you know the past three years, just for our next meeting, and sure. you can email it. We'll have it just to look at. We'll be. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want you to be sure too that you realize that the uh, marijuana impact, uh, marijuana money goes into the local receipt number two. Okay, and that's kind of why I asked for that because then we'll definitely see it. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, the green line, the other available funds for appropriation. Right. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What does that represent? So those are your enterprise funds, your water, sewer, stormwater. Those would be the items that will get voted on at town meeting. Those are not part of the general fund. They're funds by themselves. 
uh, CPA funds is the your Community Preservation Act, and that gets voted on by itself as well. That's a, uh, it's part of a, um, a combined article now. It used to be an article all by itself. Okay. Um, Carol, do you have, I don't see it here, um, do you have the spreadsheet or the, the data that shows us, um, you know, I guess it's technically new growth, free cash, uh, must pays, and what's left over. Do you have that table? For, you mean for the free cash? Is that what you're looking for? Yes, I'm looking for what the select board and the town will be looking at in terms of available resources for appropriation, um, for above level service requests, for capital funding, mm -hmm. et cetera. So uh, right now, uh, as it shows in, in this uh, statement, we have $1,190,000 in free cash available for the fall, uh, excuse me, for the spring. Um, of that, 303000 is HCA money that has to be used for mitigate, uh, marijuana mitigation. Say that figure again. 303448 Thank you. Um, I have an estimated amount of what I consider must funds um, for the fall, uh, for the spring, and it's uh, 525589 It's unpaid bills. Um, some of these items, it's, there's still uh, going to be discussion whether or not they're, because they're, they're articles that are presented every single year but really should be part of the operating budgets. Bus um, leases, computer leases. Right, so, it's, so we have the audit, we have the uh, fiscal year 23 interim year inspections, we have the fiscal year 23 recertification, um, police vehicle leases, school bus leases, school computers leases. Uh, road maintenance repair, um, Medicare reimbursements, um, unemployment insurance. I, in my number of that 525,000, I have included $150,000 for stabilization. Um, to you, I mean, the stabilization policy is that you'll have 5% of your annual budget uh, in your stabilization. So I think that at some point we have to think about putting more money in there. Uh, OPEB hasn't been funded in a couple of years, so I have a $50,000 placeholder in there for that. So um, if you take all the things that I've considered um, that need to be paid uh, in the spring, it leaves a balance of $361,000. How much? $361,000. Can you provide us a table of your recommendations or what you just said. I mean, you don't have to, you know, advocate for what you just, I understand right. it, OPEB, right. stabilization is right. a town policy, nobody knows better than Jody. Um, and the other, you know, must pays, right. if you could list those out, sure. um, you know, for next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 361 is kind of the bogey for anything that we talk about for anything new, any new, you know, above service level requests, um, any capital funding, et cetera. It's not, it's not 1.1, certainly. 1.1 right. goes away real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm uh, hogging the floor, and I don't mean to. I'm hoping to ask questions that kind of help some folks uh, that may not be familiar with this, but sure. some of it's, you know, Too familiar. helping me uh, <laughs> you know, as well. So. Okay. I have a quick question. Please. Sure. On OPEB. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, recently, someone in town asked me if there is kind of a funding deadline that the state has set to um, fund OPEB at a certain level. Not, not as far as I'm aware. Okay. That was my understanding, mm -hmm. but I wanted to hear it from you folks. Right. There's only <laughs> one community that I'm aware of that is fully funded uh, at this point for OPEB, and that would be the town of Wellesley. They yes. put in an override of a million dollars a year till they were fully funded. So yeah. that's that's my understanding. Um, so um, you're sticking with it. Well, other communities could be, but I, I really don't think so. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'm wondering if you want to brief people on what OPEB is. It's kind of a yearly explanation because I, I forgot from last I'm year. Gonna, I'm going to defer to Ms. Garzon. 
<laughs> or to the town administrator. Uh, Jody's so the expert on it. Give Carol. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's other post-employment benefits. Uh, mm -hmm. So health insurance. It's mainly health insurance for the mostly retirees. health insurance. It's not right. like the pensions. But so when you have a state worker, when you have a municipal worker retiring, it is their health insurance portion, mm -hmm. primarily. Right. So okay. Right. There could be some other things in there, but. Yeah. Basically, it's the health insurance. What I don't understand about OPEB is, OPEB is if it's if we're not fully funded as a town, then how are the benefits getting paid for? That was my question. Pay as you go. The, right. Not it's a health insurance. <laughs> pay as, a, pay okay. as you so go. It's in the health insurance budget. <clears throat> right. And ideally, the idea behind that is eventually you'd set aside a basically a investment vehicle and put enough funds in it that you wouldn't have, no longer have to pay for it out of your annual. It budget. would grow faster than you would use it. So if you so maybe an estimation is we probably have over six hundred thousand dollars of our health insurance right now that is for retirees. How many retirees do we have? I'm interrupting, Mr. Chair. No, please do. Is our this you is know, a good discussion? I don't have that number off the top of my okay. head, but um, we do have that available. Yeah, I'm just curious. I, yeah. I think the best example of this is the actual the current pension funding um, under state law. All the pension. Um, systems are supposed to be fully funded by 2040. So we're paying, if you look in the budget, you'll see that line item having to do with the assessment to Norfolk County for pensions. Theoretically, in 2040, that line will become zero. <laughs> um, That's so, over a $2 million line this year. Right. So the idea is they'll get it to a certain tipping point, um, assuming the stock market that continues to do well. <laughs> Uh, that that will actually pay for all retirees pensions moving forward and you'll no longer have to put funds in there Unfortunately up until the 1980s the pension system was purely a pay-as-you-go So basically for the last 30 year 20 some odd years we've been paying for um, The current retirees and the future retirees so almost like double paying so that's what we've been doing so okay. uh, There's been a lot of discussion among different folks that are involved in these things that the attention you know attention to the opeb is going to increase rapidly as we get closer to the 2040 right at right so at 2040 as, 20 as, yes right. the 2 million falls off it'll just switch over to opeb okay. at that point okay. um, as it should but, yeah but we we don't have crystal balls we don't know exactly how that future is going to mm. unfold but uh, you know, they, they want us to start putting money into the to the OPEB to the extent that the towns feel they're fiscally able to do so. And as I recall, there's one town that's paid up. It's just Wellesley or Brookline? Just, just Wellesley. Yeah. Wellesley, just Wellesley. Okay. And, and I they think had an I'm, override for that. I think there's only, you know, I think about 75% of the communities are funded about less than 10% of their um, of their future obligations. Okay. So what we are we not had? alone. Yeah. And this is just so you know, uh, it is only for municipal employees. Uh, the teachers are under a separate uh, retirement system, and the state pays for that. The town does not, and the school does not pay for it. It comes tax. out of the state. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair, do we, uh, do we know the percentage that we're funded at now? Uh, it's in our audit. Um, I have to go back and look at that. This is OPEB? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and the OPEB? OPEB. Oh, we only have, I think, $180,000 in our OPEB. Probably and we, we probably should be at gotcha. maybe 38 million, I yeah. think, or something. And it's like, it's a, like crazy money when you see what yeah, the number actually is. It's $47 billion <laughs> in Massachusetts that's underfunded for OPEB. Mm. All I have to do is take one year of the So we're chipping away at it. <laughs> 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 got a couple quarters here. Right? It's kind of like the national debt. Yeah. All right. Um, any more questions? I have a question. Please do. Sure. Um, I have a, some questions about the stabilization fund. Um, mm -hmm. I'm afraid I know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any line item here for the stabilization fund. We don't, right, and we do, we do not uh, draw off the stabilization fund to fund our budgets. So that's why it's not, okay. it's not a revenue source for us. So the stabilization fund, you said. I mean, I, I think in the said, past you may have had to dip into it. It's in prior, m prior years, many, many years ago. But since I've been here, before since, you got here, right? Since since I've been here in 2018, you you've been doing fairly well, and I can take no credit for that. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just cut to the. <laughs> are we at our five percent goal for the we, stabilization we fund? We are 
just above that right okay. now, I believe, but our budget is growing. Mm -hmm. So I think as, the, as Carol had said, the target moves. we're looking right, to right. stay ahead of it. Oh, so uh, excellent. We did, right. I think about four year, three or four years ago, we put 300000 into right. it. We put a large chunk of money into it, and so that's been sort of keeping us above that 5% but we're getting near to the point where we need to add more and stay above that 5%. And traditionally that would come from free cash, I'm assuming? That right. Is, yeah. Right. Okay. Most of the time that's the case. Right. And uh, it is currently on the draft warrant, stabilization. Right. Oh, good. Thank you. Better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I want to keep going with this discussion if there's questions because I know a couple of you have reached out to me for kind of the big picture and, and this is, you know, there's certainly peel back. You could peel back this onion a lot, a lot of different ways, but this is as pretty much as good as it's going to get in terms of an overview of the the finance, the, you know, the the big picture finances of the town. Um, so if you could just to remind, just to recap, if you could provide us um, a breakdown of local receipts, say for the last three years, you know, just a picture of what that comprised, and then that same calculation that um, how you got to the 361. Um, for the free you know, cash. For the free cash. Mm -hmm. If you could do that for a historical as well over the, say, the same years, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably three mouse clicks for you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe five, but I hope I'm not asking you to recreate something that, or recreate something that you don't already have. So you want three years. And if you wouldn't mind, could we get the updated debt schedule as sure. well? Mm. That'd be that would be good. Yeah, Thank you. we like to good see point. that every year. It's helpful. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I know one of your future, one of your uh, agenda items coming up this evening is to set your future FinCon meeting schedule. And I just wanted to let you know I anticipate being able to produce and present my budget recommendation for fiscal year 23 at your meeting on the 30th. Uh, I believe that's two weeks from tonight. Um, and uh, um, your your office's budget recommendation or for the whole town the, for the whole town thank you that's two different things i'll be ready for mine next week thank you <laughs> thank okay. you okay well that i'm going to go um so uh, carol unless you have something else for us i'm going to uh defer the fall town meeting non-passing article items we are going to discuss it next week we're so far behind schedule um i'm just going to defer that um, and get right into the discuss and set the, the uh, FinCom schedule, which um, I worked on a little bit. Mr. Uh, Chair, if I could, if I could just ahead. ask if there's any sort Two of um, documentation available as to the indirect costs that are coming from the, yeah, this building, yeah, not including the uh, DPW, but the indirect costs that... It's the same, it's the exact same formula that we used last year and the year before Kathy, and you've had copies of, and all it is is just we plug in what the account administrator's salaries are, or, you know, offices. It just, it, it, it's just a plug-in of the, you know, it's the same standard model that's been used for the last, uh, since I've been here. I'm just curious, though, as the chair mentioned, that um, certain uh, staffing was changed around to uh, reflect that it wasn't with the enterprise fund anymore. So I'm wondering um, why it's gone up so much in one year. This amount, eighty thousand dollars. I think she's looking at this shit right here. From this to this. Twenty-one to twenty-two. Yeah. Yeah. It went up eighty-four thousand dollars. Right. So you want to know what? So that's not a problem. Okay. Take a look. Just, just you know, so I can keep it up with mine from last year. And thank you for this. This is very helpful. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Okay, um, so I put together a, uh, a generic, you know, general calendar of our meetings. Uh, you can see what we talked about in, in uh, February. Um, today's meeting we covered, so the 16th, we covered Council on Aging, uh, Town Clerk, Board of Assessor, Conservation Commission, a budget overview. I'll scratch off the CY21 uh, fall town meeting items. On tap for next week, the tree warden, uh, the school committee, the select board is the select board is going to convene uh, a meeting uh, concurrently with our meeting so that multiple members can attend. Um, and I do plan to um, ask them to discuss some of the warrant items with us if 
you know, we'll see what we get. Um, the town administrator is going to present uh, his budget as along with the executive office budget and the building's budget. Um, town council. Town council. Okay. Um, I am going to go over, so next week I'm also going to, I'd like to go over uh, or discuss article assignments. I'd actually like to give them next week article assignments and so, so that you know what that is. It looks like there's going to be 29 uh, articles, uh, some roughly, I, you know. Actually, Mr. Chairman, I have a total of, and again, this is a draft. This right, is which 27 is 27 articles. I, I will say that the part of the discussion the select board is going to have over the next couple weeks is determining, and this is a follow-up discussion from discussions that were had last year and over the prior year about whether or not certain items should not be included as articles within the warrant but contained within operational budgets, oh, yeah. departmental budgets. So the select board is going to be taking a very good look at that with the idea of trying to appropriately put those within operational budgets. Understood. Um, and some of those will have to have that discussion about whether that's subject or not subject to the 4% cap. I understand. That, that's and a big issue. Um, but that's why there may be some movement in these articles. It, I fully anticipate there will be movement based on, you know, what I pulled off of the town website from yesterday or, excuse me, Monday's meeting. Um, there are two more um, elected, uh, excuse me, the um, citizens' petition articles. So that's how I got to 29. Some could come off. Some could be added. So what I want to do is uh, I would like for everybody to um, pull up the draft warrant, which is on the meeting materials or the calendar for the last select board meeting. Um, print that out, look at it, and just kind of pencil it. If, you have, if you're interested and knowledgeable and already knowledgeable on any of these articles, um, shoot me a note, shoot me an email, just to me, not to the rest of the uh, committee, and say, hey, I'd like to do this, that, or the other. Uh, for our new or, or lesser experienced members, I'll send you an email that says, please be thinking along, you know, please anticipate that you'll be assigned to this article. And if you're feeling really ambitious, then we'll discuss it as a committee. So next week, I'd like to pencil in, you know, names against each of the articles. And the reason I want to do that is, one, um, you'll have, you know, you could have more pointed questions. You can start thinking about if you didn't fully get all of your questions answered, answered, uh, questions answered during committee proceedings, then you feel free to reach out to the respective department head or representative to get your questions answered because it's going to be you that leads the discussion during town meeting and you know you should be in when you write up your discussion, you should be the one that's hopefully answering the questions that you would anticipate from the town you're not going to get 100% of them. There will be questions asked, but hopefully, you know, you're, you're able to convey um, the committee's position, which we will vote on, um, and help somebody cast their vote, help somebody decide whether they're going to vote yay or nay, uh, essentially. That's, you know, in, in a, briefly, that's what it's all about. Um, so those are the 29. So I'd like to do that um, next week on the 23rd. Uh, for the 30th, we'll have the zoning board, uh, the citizens petition, um, who uh, coincidentally, uh, that is Ms. McGinnis, and is the 30th looking okay? Or did yes, you, sir. Okay, so the 30th, um, there are potentially two articles. Um, Kathy is going to present those to us. Um, that's the 30th. Uh, the 6th, the Capital Planning Committee will uh, present um, its report and proceedings, a summary of their proceedings. That's what we uh, confirmed last night yeah. based on their moving, the, the select board moving their their uh, agenda item with Mr. Barry. Yes, yes. From the 11th to the 6th? Yes. Okay, okay. So um, the Capital Planning Committee went through 10, 12 different uh, capital planning requests or capital item requests prioritized them, had discussions, um, and published a report. And so Mr. Barry, who's the chair of that committee, um, will come and, and discuss that with us. And then we will do a warrant review and discussion led by Mr. Gazinski. 
which hopefully the warrant is a little bit more finalized by then. Um, are you speaking about the 30th? The 6th. 6th, sixth. 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 Yes, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, Just make sure it's not next week. <laughs> <laughs> if we, so if you kind of look further, uh, we don't plan to have a meeting uh, the week of the 18th through the 22nd. That is, uh, you know, school break, um, no meeting planned. Um, however, the FinCom report has to be to the printer, I believe, by the 18th, which is two weeks prior to town meeting. Am I, am I on track with that? So given that if we wait until the 13th to have that following meeting, that only gives us a few days to do quite a bit of work. So I'm throwing it out there to potentially have our, our second meeting in May on the 11th or 12th just to back it up uh, in April, thank you. Um, is that what you texted me? <laughs> no, I, I just said April. Um, so in April, so if everybody could look at their calendar and just try to be flexible and pencil those days off for the 11th or 12th. Mike, what was the reason for the select board me moving Mr. Barry from the 11th? Uh, because they, um, the select board anticipates um, actually signing the warrant on the 11th, and they wanted to get the uh, capital committee's okay. really presentation at least a week ahead of time, okay. so they had time to digest okay. it. I just want to make sure if by us moving, potentially moving our meeting to the 11th, there wouldn't be any conflicts with them, and I don't think that there would be so. maybe other space. Than, other, than I, other than space and the fact that I might not be able to join you. <laughs> Unacceptable, Mike. Um, we know we want to know where your allegiance lies. Anyway, um, we'll work it out. Um, so potentially, we could move that meeting uh, sometime earlier that week. Then we'd have deliverables, um, which is really pretty easy. It's a synopsis, a couple sentences um, due to our admin person um, by the end of the week, so that those can go into the FinCom uh, report uh, over the weekend. Um, so by some miracle that will happen. Pre-town meeting would likely be the 27th, uh, Wednesday prior to town meeting, which is scheduled for the second. Um, if anybody, when you review this now or between now and next week, if you see any um, items either on the draft article list that is on the select board uh, meeting material, you, if you think you would like to have a follow-up, please let me know, and I'll be so advised and you know likely inclined to invite those somebody back or somebody else. Um, there is a request for the town attorney to at to attend next week's meeting, um, and I likely that will happen. Um, so you know that the way that the town attorney request work is, you just need to. If there's a legal issue that you think we should be aware of or, or should be considered um, and we would be interested in hearing the town attorney's opinion on a subject, then you need to forward, the, the procedure is forward the request to me, I'll consider it and work the request through the town administrator, which I've done on the, in this particular case. Okay, any questions or comments? I do, Mr. Chair. Um, when, when will the um, select board, Mr. Guzinski, be discussing uh, the marijuana funds? Is that um, next that, week they here? Will, they will be doing that within the next within the next two weeks. So it, 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 they will make a determination on what they plan on putting forward for that. Okay. So certainly, prior to your meeting on the thirtieth. Are there um, draft HCA requests in our budget book? Yes. In other words, what they're cons. It should be. I yes. think it's yeah. at the back of the book. For each department. department. Yeah. Okay. Have you consolidated those electronically? At the back of your Have book. Have you consolidated be... those electronically? Oh, electronically. <laughs> yeah. Could you just send them just so we don't have to? Don't, yeah, don't. I'm not asking for more paper, but if you have it as a spreadsheet, just send it to us and uh, we can, we'll make a point of, I'll add that to an agenda item and we'll review those. Okay. Thank you very much. I just and, and, and finally, I just um, I think the um, as we've been going through our hearing process, we've heard a lot about um, potential marijuana impact funds being used for certain areas. And I'm wondering, Mr. Gazinski, do you take that knowledge back to the select board and uh, discuss it with them? 
most particularly like the condition of the roads in front of the marijuana facility and justification could be used I do, to yes, use I that do make funds. them aware of the different okay. ideas that are put okay. forward. Um, and there were a few others too, so right, thanks. Right. Um, we do have a fairly healthy amount of proposals before um, the select board now for HCA funds. Um, so they are taking those into consideration as well as the fact that we have to start you know, at, certainly after this year anyway, we have to start planning the sunset <laughs> of those mm -hmm. funds and mm -hmm. make determinations about which, which items they would consider to try to find other funding for and which items would ha simply have to uh, be discontinued. So um, that, that's, that's also part of the process that they will start going through. But um, would you mind forwarding to the um, town finance director that if she could assemble a um, HCA you know, chart of revenue for this year and past years, um, just so that we have that. She has it. She has it. She has it. I'm, I'm sure she does. Yeah, three. <laughs> the look back, you know, since it and started. Look ahead, five maybe. Years. How many years? When is it over? Five. We have two it's more. It's over two, two more. Years. Two. So yeah, one or two. two? Uh, twenty-three and twenty-three and twenty-four, and then it's gonna yep. start dropping off. And then, Mr. Chair, if I might ask, is there another company that will be starting up by then? Not a for retail. those. Okay, all right. Um, Good. I just want everyone to know that because they're saying, oh, there's other ones down the road. No, the so. retail is the, well, I say delivery. that the retail, retail is delivery. the only one that provides significant <laughs> revenues um, in that area. Uh, we do have several other um, companies that are looking to either um, have cultivation, uh, manufacturing, and testing, but no, we're, by, by zoning, we only have, no. uh, we only allow one. How about Thank delivery? Do, would there delivery, be post delivery? Um, we really don't have much say over delivery. Um, There's no HCA component to a delivery company. No. Okay. It's sort of like the Wild West. Okay. And um, just as a point of information, that you the um, we only have one retail, and that's where I think most of the revenue would the, come from. Yeah. So the other ones that are coming, we have a cultivator. Um, they haven't even broken ground on the building they're going to build. So. I wouldn't anticipate anything from them for at least two years. Yeah. Uh, the other two, the one up at 1073, I think is the same situation. Um, and also the one that's going to go the cold uh, manufacturing. I don't think that, I think they're just a, maybe doing they're permitting or something. So it's going to be quite a long years. time before yeah. you yeah, see any money from thank you. those individuals. We're not, we're not figuring any of those funds in any of our future revenue projections at this point. Um, it's really limited to um, Comcan and their operation is really is the only real live operation we have going right now. Okay. Uh, Carol, I'm sorry to keep asking, peppering you with data requests, could you just split out the 3% tax revenue from marijuana sales as well, retail? And retail and marijuana and medical, correct, right? Okay. And there is no, just so you know, there is no option tax on the medical. Okay. It's Thank only you. on the recreational. And the consumer pays the recreational uh, local option tax. The, uh, the uh, Comcan only pays for their portion of the HCA 3%. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, any more? Miss Boyardi. Is it only 3% that we're getting at this point? Is it only 3% at this point? So uh, how it works is that on the HCA agreements, 3% of, of the gross sales. Um, we get that on um, the quarter, how the quarters break out is one month earlier than we receive it from the state. The, the state the inf money that we get is from the local options tax, similar to a sales tax, but it's not considered a sales tax. Um, and so that's 3% as well. Okay. So once the HCA goes away, we will only have the money from the uh, local state. option. Uh, the um, that just is, a, that is permanent. That's attached right, to the business right. for its life. So just a point of information is that the last quarter that we received um, HCA money was um, $25,000 less than the quarter before. So their revenues have dipped a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more competition in the That's area. Right. Uh, yeah. They didn't have competition when, when right. we first had them. Uh, first started receiving the goods, so oh, the money. So um, now there's quite a few. And so just people need to be aware of that. I think I mentioned that to, to everybody before. <laughs> so times. to keep the 400,000, uh, we might want to start thinking about a little bit less than that. 
We're not getting as many travelers from Boston or Central Mass as we were. Rhode Island. Blackstone has two. <laughs> one and a half mile from my house. <laughs> Never been inside, for the record. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, neither have we. Okay, all right. All what right. you do in your free time is your All right, um, I'd like to move <laughs> to the meeting minutes. Um, and if I could uh, ask. Chair, I, I have one quick question. Mr. Underhill. Um, administrative support for the committee. Oh, Do thanks. we have any updates on that? Yes. I, I have spoken with the chair about this a little bit. Um, as you know, we've, we've had some frustration with that. We have advertised for that. We did not get um, uh, any applicants. Um, uh, Karen. Uh, in my office, our operations support manager uh, is basically handling all the necessary things. Um, but of course, you know, you you had a, a someone that had 15 years plus of experience working with a committee. So we're doing the best we can on that. As part of my proposal, um, which I'll discuss next week, um, there is an item in there to cons for the finance committee to consider um, that would have more of a permanent person established within um, my office that would do minutes and um, you know the meeting uh, preparations for the finance committee, the capital committee, the select board, and they, they would basically be a central person to handle all of that. Um, but I can talk about more, more of that when uh, you meet next week. Um, but uh, I'll be in touch with the chair to continue to make sure we, we try to provide the the best support we can to the committee. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, meeting minutes. Um, I move we accept minutes of last week. Um, so I don't have them in front of me. I know that there's a. I actually think that there's a typo oh. on the date. Oh. I think that meeting was on March second. Yeah. So less. Yeah. Less yes. the date. Um, uh, can you make a motion? That would be two weeks ago, March second. Right, March third. Right. Uh, so we're going to review minutes from. Did I put two? Why did I put two? March second. Uh, so there's a March ninth. Yeah. March second meeting minutes here to review. Yep. Right. And then there's February seventeenth. We did February 17th. No, we did not. I thought not. that was, was yeah, that already we passed? We did not. Okay. We did. I, had to, I had to resubmit those. Oh, okay. They That's were missed. Right. That's right. Okay. Apologize. So is this from the yeah. documents that I turned um, them in. Karen sent out before the Yes. Meeting? Okay. So if I could just take one motion on the meet, meeting minutes from March 2nd, and if your motion could include just a typographical... Um, as amended. Correction. Yeah, amended. Day. As amended. The second, I took a motion. I I move that we accept the minutes of March second, with the exception of the date. Thank you. Second, it's been moved and seconded to approve the meeting minutes from the March second meeting as amended. Discussion. All I'll, those in. I'll be abstaining. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody? Any nays? None heard. One abstention. Okay. Next one. I actually think it was the same issue. I think Mr. Underhill is stuck on Thursdays. That's probably yeah. when I turned them in. That's why. <laughs> uh, so that was oh, February 16th. No problem. February 16th. So it's the 16th. So same thing. Just um, please amend to the, si to the meeting of the 16th of February. So I move that we accept the minutes of the February 16th meeting with the correction of the date of the minutes. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we vote that we approve the minutes from the meeting of February 16th as amended discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 No abstentions. Any nays? None heard. You would abstain. I'm abstaining. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. Love me. Um, okay. That uh, covers meeting minutes. Thank you very much. Chair, I move that we go home. It's been adjourn. second. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Good luck, Chase. Thank you. Okay, really. We'll do better on the uh, issue. I mean, can I? <laughs>